Welcome to the sewing report. We're going to be taking this target tablecloth and turning it into a monogrammed Christmas stocking. So let's get started first. We need the tablecloth. I got this one last year and now I'm finally going to be putting it to good use for a few different holiday projects. So stay tuned. So I'm spreading the fabric out. I did pre-wash and dry it, especially since I was going to be monogramming it. And I have to admit, I did not design this stocking pattern. I got this off of Blueprint, but there are several free patterns rolling around out there on the internet. So I'm gonna link those. So the first thing I'm doing, I need to get the outside of my stockings and I'm making two. So I used my washer pattern weights and I'm kind of cutting a rough outline of the stockings. So the reason I'm not cutting out the pattern so exact yet is because I wanna make sure I have enough room to hoop. So then I centered the stocking. Now I'm using my four by four inch hoop and I'm deciding where my monogram is going. For this project, I'm using tearaway stabilizer and water soluble topping. I do this whenever I have fabric that has a little bit of a pile to it. And I will also link the machine I'm using. This is the Brother PE 800. I just got it recently and I am loving it. I'm monogramming everything I can possibly get my hands on. It's going a little nuts and you may see some more embroidery projects in the future here on the sewing report. So just wanted to warn you about that. So I'm doing somebody's initials. This is actually for my Reddit secret Santa gifty. Now that the monogram's done, I unhoop, put the pattern piece back on and my washer pattern weights and cut the shapes out for real this time. So now we're gonna work on the lining. This is a red cotton Robert Kaufman Kona cotton. All right, so now I'm pinning right sides together, my stocking exterior, sewing this up. I'm gonna be using a little over a quarter inch seam allowance for the exterior fabric. And I'm going to be using a slightly larger seam allowance for my interior fabric. I find that kind of makes the item fit together better when you have a main fabric and a lining fabric and make sure to backstitch just to help prevent those stitches from coming loose. I'm taking scissors and I'm clipping the corners and the curves. That will again, help when you're turning this project right side out to, to look nice and to have that nice shape. Now I'm gonna add my Made by Sewing Report label on the inside of the lining, just for that added touch. And we're gonna pin right sides together the lining. I'm leaving a space at the bottom of the stocking for turning later. So just make sure you don't sew that part. So now I'm pinning these together, taking it back to the sewing machine. And again, I'm skipping that part that I outlined before because that's what you're gonna use to turn the whole project inside out. And then you're gonna sew that opening closed. And a reminder, I am using a slightly bigger seam allowance. I used about a half an inch on the lining just because the lining is gonna have to fit inside the main fabric and I find when you give it the same seam allowance, sometimes it doesn't always fit together so nicely. Finger pressing the lining opening and now I'm using my pinking shears to actually cut around the curves here. All right, working on the loop handle, I'm cutting a piece of fabric about three inches by probably about 10 to 11 inches pressing it in half and then opening it and then pressing each end to the middle. And this is an easy way to make handles or loops. And I'm glue basting with my Elmer's washable school glue and I just find that helps you to keep from using pins. Now I'm top stitching about an eighth an inch away from each edge. And now I form my loop and I'm just gonna do a few stitches to secure it. And these loops are about four inches, four to five inches in length, which will be nice for hanging. So now I'm turning my lining right side out and I'm going to be inserting it into the main stocking. Now the main fabric will be inside out because you want your right sides together when you sew the top portion closed. Now 
may take you a little bit of elbow grease just to get everything in there. I'm pinning my seams open. And because you used a smaller seam allowance on the lining, it should fit together pretty nicely. And I'm inserting my loop. You want to insert it like upside down so it faces in to the fabric, into the stocking. And I'm making sure that my loop is not on the side that the monogram is because I want my loop on the back of the stocking. And I promise we are in the home stretch for this holiday stocking here. To make things easier for sewing this portion, I'm going to be using my free arm on the sewing machine. This is the Janome 7700. And using a half inch seam allowance, I'm just sewing around the entire circle opening here. And you don't have to leave an opening in this part because you already did that in the lining piece. So it should look pretty neat at the top of your stocking. Now comes the fun part. You're gonna be turning everything inside out. So pulling the right side of the main fabric out. I'm doing a little lint roll. Things went a little crazy with the fraying here. And then I just have to press the lining closed, use some pins, and I'm just gonna stitch this part shut using, again, another top stitch about an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fabric. So now I'm inserting the lining into the stocking, and here is your finished stocking. I hope you enjoyed this. This was a fun project. If you did, be sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing to The Sewing Report for everything sewing crafts and DIY projects. I'm Jennifer Moore, and I'll see you again in the next video.